Hello, 6th graders. Welcome to Big Ideas Math, Contract Math, Section 6.5, 2014, Percents of Increase and Decrease Activity. Pause while you write Section 6.5, 2014, Activity in your math notebook. Pause again while you write today's activity objective in your math notebook. The activity objective is understand the connection between the percent proportion and the percent equation. Copy the following key terms, definitions, and examples exactly as they appear into your notebook. The, per the percent of change is the percent that a quantity changes from the original amount. Be sure you copy the formula and the example into your notebook. The percent of increase is the percent of change when the original amount increases. Be sure to copy the formula as well as the example into your math notebook. Continue copying the last two key terms, definitions, and examples exactly as they appear. The percent of decrease is the percent of change when the original amount decreases. Be sure you copy the formula and the example. The percent error is the percent that an estimated quantity differs from the actual amount. Be sure you copy that formula as well as the example. Today we're going to start on page 129 in your record and practice journal. We're going to be working on percent of decrease. Each year in the Columbia River Basin, adult salmon swim upriver to streams to lay eggs and hatch their young. To go upriver, the adult salmon use fish ladders but to go down the river, the young salmon must pass through several dams. At one time, there were electric turbines at each of the eight dams on the main stem of the Columbia and Snake Rivers. About 88% of the young salmon pass through these turbines unharmed. It says complete the table to show the number of young salmon that made it through the dams. So if we look at the first dam, we need to start with before they pass through any dam. So that would be the box that says zero. And before they go through there, there's a thousand salmon. And we take the thousand and we multiply that by 88%. So that's 0 0.88 because that's the number that make it through each dam. And when we do that, we get 880. So 880 come through the first dam unharmed. And then we take 880 and we multiply that by 88%. And we come up with about 774. There's a little rounding error there, but that's okay. And then we keep going. We take 774 and we multiply that by 88%. And we have 681 who make it through unharmed. And then we have 599 and 527 and then 464 and then 408 and then finally after the last dam there are only 359 salmon that make it through unharmed. So what's important to understand here is that every entry is 12 percent less than the entry before it. So we go down 12% every time because we are multiplying by 88%. So all the way across we go down by 12%. But our percent that we are multiplying by 
stays the same. So every time we multiply, we are multiplying by 88%. So that's what's causing our 12% decrease. In part B of our activity, on page 130, we're asked to make a bar graph of the surviving salmon. So those are the salmon who make it through the dam unscathed. And so we are going to do that. Um, after dam 1, there are 880. So that's right about here. Should have that. And then after dam two, there are 774. So that is close to the 800 line, but not quite. So it should look like that. So your assignment for tonight is going to be to complete activity B and activity C. So you need to do those on your own. Um, so this, when you read activity C, it says, by what percent did the number of young salmon decrease when passing through each dam? So it's looking at each dam individually, not looking for the total decrease. So we talked about that in part A. So your answer is in part A. Your assignment for this lesson is to complete letters B and C of Activity 1 on page 130 of your Record and Practice Journal. Be prepared to share during our next class. Remember, to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson, you need to complete your exit slip, come to our next class prepared with the journal pages or other work from the flipped lesson completed, be prepared with any work that was assigned in the flipped lesson completed, and be prepared with any questions you have for your teacher, and of course, have a good attitude.